Hey everyone, this is Ben with ColonAllergicUrticaria.net and in this video I'm going to talk to you about some of the other allergic disorders and other physical urticarias that exist out there that may occur alongside with your hives disorder. Um, first of all, you know, when you have ColonAllergic Urticaria, it's not uncommon whatsoever to have other allergies and um, in fact, allergies often come in pairs. You might have uh, you might have eczema and asthma, or you might have rhinitis and eczema, or you might have cholinergic urticaria and cold urticaria. It's not uncommon. Not everyone has that, but a lot of times people, if they have one type of allergy issue, they'll also have another type of allergy issue. So one of the one of the things that's associated with cholinergic urticaria is eczema. Some people have reported an eczema condition. Like I said, when, I, when my house came back the second time, I actually started to develop eczema and dermatitis type rashes on me, which I eventually found out was, was caused by my food uh, allergies and intolerances. Once I removed those, they cleared up. But eczema is something you wanna watch out for. And another one is dry skin. Uh, I don't know, there's just something about having this type of hives that a lot of people seem to get dry skin, especially in the winter. I think part of it's because your body just doesn't sweat and sort of release those oils and and the sweat on your skin to help kind of keep it moisturized. What I use for that, I use something called Eucerin Calming Cream. It's a type of lotion. It helps with dry skin in general. I, I discovered this actually when I had hives pretty bad. I was looking online at creams. I found it on Amazon.com. It had like fantastic reviews. I decided to try it. I found that it would keep my body cooler and it seemed like I didn't break out in a hives reaction quite as quickly because I had just kind of cooler skin. But it's not gonna eliminate your hives in most cases. I still use it to this day just because I really like the lotion. My wife uses it too and she doesn't have hives or anything, but it's a pretty good quality lotion. It's kind of expensive, but it's like I think $8 or eight or $9 for a bottle, but it'll last quite a while. Uh, asthma is another condition. Some people have reported that they have asthma or had asthma growing up or that sometimes when, not, when they exercise or whatever that they kind of get short of breath or have kind of asthmatic condition. That's something else that can occur. Uh, seasonal allergies or rhinitis, that's something again a lot of people have reported that they'll have seasonal allergies when they have this disorder. It's not uncommon at all. Food allergies and food sensitivities, you know, I'm, I'm the poster boy for that practically. I, I can't hardly eat anything these days really without having some sort of reaction to it. Acne, you know, some I've never had a problem with acne. I had a little bit on my temples and stuff when I was in high school, but some people with colon security carry have reported acne or like back acne or face acne. So that's something that, you know, some people report. Keratosis pilaris is another thing. They call that chicken skin, and that's where the back patch of your arm can get kind of patchy in other areas of your skin, and it kind of looks like little dots, like chicken skin. If you Google it on the internet, uh, and again, that's keratosis pilaris. A lot of people seem to have that, that have colon urticaria. And, you know, I used to think, it's produced by excess keratin in your skin, and I used to think maybe that's why people with colon urticaria can't sweat. Maybe that keratin blocks their sweat pores or something, but, it doesn't seem like that's a major factor. I still sort of have some on, on the back of my arms, even you know, on my diet, and my hives don't bother me. So I think it just may be an associate, it's associated with it, but doesn't have any kind of a direct causal relationship at this point. Angiolipomas, that's something that I personally had. I don't know if anyone else has that, but it's just kind of these rubbery little, uh, I guess you could call them tumors or something, like a little rubbery cyst sort of. Um, I have a couple of those. I actually have a few on my arms and I had one removed from my back one time because I didn't know what it was, but they're just pretty much harmless little rubbery cysts that form under the skin surface. I have them. I don't know if anyone else has them. I just threw that out there because some other people may have that associated with their hives. Now, as far as the other physical urticaria types, like I said, you know, they break hives into different subsets and colon urticaria is one of the physical urticarias but some of those other ones i'm just going to give a brief overview solar urticaria also called a sun allergy rash that's when you go out and you have a hypersensitive reaction in your skin whenever you're exposed to sunlight or ultraviolet light and again similar symptoms which is going to be itching a rash burning tingling in the skin so forth uh, that's what happens with that you may have a couple of these different hives disorders so keep all these in mind as I'm reading these to you. Um, cold urticaria is another type where you know you actually have the exact opposite of colon urticaria, where if you sweat and get cold, or if you're in a hot room, walk into a cold room, or if you put like an ice cube on your body or something like that, it can actually cause 
that sort of shivering response in your body actually seems to cause hives reaction, itching, burning, and that's something, and it can cause swelling, flushing, just pretty much a lot like corn energy to carry, except it's a reaction to cold. Even drinking beverages, swimming, sweating, getting goosebumps, any of these things can sometimes cause people to have a reaction. Dermatographic urticaria, that's are also called uh, dermographism and a skin rotting disorder, they call it various things. That's where you can kind of scrape your skin or draw a line on it or whatever, take a sharp object and kind of rub on it and it will form a very distinct line. And I actually watched a movie, I think it was like Modern Medical Mysteries or something like that, where a girl actually earned a living by creating art on her body, by taking kind of a sharp blade and she would draw all these intricate designs on her body and then they would all form on her skin and it was really bizarre looking it would persist for i think several minutes or maybe an hour or two and she would take pictures of them and she would sell it as art and uh some people like they kind of get burning and stinging but some people like her i don't think it bothered her at all it, there was just visible signs on her skin but it didn't actually bother her um, another one is called aquagenic urticaria or water urticaria and this is a type of hot, this one's interesting. I think it's one of the most interesting ones because whenever someone just gets in water, they develop hives. So if they take a shower, if they sweat, if they get squirted with water, sometimes even if they cry and the water rubs down their uh, cheek, if they're drinking and like water spills down, any of these things, just the, the act of the water touching their skin seems to cause a reaction. And uh, aside from that, there's contact pressure and vibratory urticaria and with contact urticaria it's just exactly what it sounds like if you come into contact with something allergic it could be latex a certain metal or something like that lotion if you touch it on your skin it's going to cause a hive hives reaction uh, vibratory urticaria that's when something like a vibrating like if you play a vibrating instrument or maybe if you have your cell phone in your pocket and it goes on vibrate that can actually cause a reaction and then pressure urticaria that's where uh, if you have a wristwatch, if you have jewelry or tight clothing that really just tight on your skin, that can actually cause your skin to swell or have like a hives itchy reaction right there. And so those are some of the other type of physical urticarias or urticarias that respond in, in a really weird way. Like I said, there's all kinds of different hives types out there. So, you know, if you have, you might have a couple of those different ones and that's something that you want to take into account when you're trying to treat it. I hope that helps some of you out there who might be suffering and just kind of keep in mind that you're not alone in this. A lot of people out there have have these strange hives conditions and you'll you'll get through it if you just hang in there. So thank you so much for watching. God bless.